Today on Sly Guys, Vortex Cannons. Welcome to Sci Guys. I'm Ryan. And I'm Teresa. And today we'll be making a Vortex Cannon. And I'm going to be an airbender. I did it! Sure you did. A Vortex Cannon is a device that uses changes in volume to shoot pressurized air. And it's also a really fun example of Boyle's Law, which we talked about in one of our previous episodes. The equipment you're going to need this episode includes a box, a pencil and a glass to draw your hole, some duct tape, a box cutter, and a stack of disposable cups to use as a target. While we're not dealing with anything hazardous today, our younger viewers always want to make sure to get help when dealing with anything sharp. The first step in our experiment is to take your glass and your pencil and use them to make an outline of where we're going to cut our hole. Place your glass in the middle of your box and outline the glass with your pencil. Once you have your outline drawn, use your box cutter and follow the guide that you made to cut out your hole. For the next step, we're going to duct tape any open areas on the box. You want to make sure there's no open areas that air might be able to escape. Now that we have our box taped up, we're ready to shoot some targets. Aim your box in the direction of your targets and slap the sides of your box with your hands. This will produce an air vortex that will knock over your targets. Let's try this again at a longer distance, but this time we're going to fill it with some fog so we can see the shape of our vortex. Our cannon produces a vortex in the shape of a donut, also known as a toroid. The previous targets were set up at a distance of around 20 feet. This time, let's try to hit targets at a distance of around 40 feet. Let's look at this experiment a little closer. Our cannon is full of air molecules, and they press against the sides of our box, generating pressure. At the beginning of our experiment, the pressure inside and outside of our box is about equal. When we hit the sides of our box, the volume of space that the air inside takes up is quickly reduced, rapidly increasing its pressure. This decrease in volume and increase in pressure pushes the air molecules through the hole in our box, generating enough force and momentum to send them shooting out at our targets. A really interesting phenomena happens next. When a fluid like air is forced through a round hole like the one in our vortex cannon, it takes on the shape of a donut or toroid of air. A toroidal vortex has a special property. As it travels forward, its air molecules rotate around the ring in a circular pattern. The direction that the air molecules rotate is determined by the direction of the vortex's movement. This rotation reduces the friction between our vortex and the surrounding air molecules, allowing it to travel long distances with very little loss of shape and momentum. The speed that our swirling air vortex travels also helps to keep its shape. Our vortex's speed of motion causes the air that it's made up of to have a lower pressure than the air in the environment. This means that as our vortex travels forward, the air around it, which has a greater pressure, pushes inward like a giant mold, preventing it from growing larger and dissipating. If the air molecules in our toroidal vortex were not rotating to reduce the friction, then our vortex would quickly dissipate and we wouldn't be able to knock over cups at long distances. That's it for Vortex Cannons. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments below and subscribe to future episodes. And be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you have any questions related to this episode, or about science in general, let us know in the comments below or message us on Facebook and we'll try to help you out as best possible. Thanks for watching. Bye! Bye! With this, I am now an airbender. I don't think you know what that is. Here at Sci Guys, we're always curious how experiments turn out. So if you do these experiments at home, share a video or photo of them with us on our Facebook or Google Plus page. But remember to always ask your parents' permission before you share any photos or videos.